Well guys, we are back out in the garage it's Saturday afternoon. Did some quick repairs on the uh, my daughter's boyfriend's car. Brought him back up and running some new wires, plugs. Took care of a miss. As I was saying before, I have trouble uh, getting online. I can watch videos on this silly thing. This is my son's. He's taken over my computer, so I'm lucky to get on that when he's not home. And this, obviously, not working out in the garage at all. So trying to type on this thing here just doesn't impress me. Anyways, I brought it out here to show you, but it's not even working out here. It won't connect to the Wi-Fi in the house. I'm too far away. But I got some. Uh, I got a package in. I ordered some stuff last week. I uh, my main goal was to get a radio. I ordered a radio, but I, uh, in the process, I wanted to fill the box up, so I got these uh, shiny little knobs for the uh, floor vents, for, so I can put the floor vent cables in. I got a new mount for my mirror. Luckily, it matched up with the mirror that I had gotten from my parents' basement, because the previous mirror, the mount was just too much of an angle, and I couldn't adjust the mirror properly. So now that's that. I got a whole box of goodies here. I started digging through it. I got some door locks so I can lock my doors. I uh, forget what this is. Um, all from Bill's truck shop. I want to thank Bill. I finally got, he's like overnight. I got these little decals too. This is something I just farting around with, but goes on the motor, on the oil filter. I think they're cool looking. A couple bucks. But I got the radio. I was so excited. I got the shipment on Friday. I opened her up and pulled it out. I'm going, wait a minute. That doesn't look right. That's not going to go in there. I thought, what is this? Some kind of universal radio? No. 47 to 53 Chevy pickup. Put the wrong one in the box for me. So no, no tunes this weekend. He's going to rectify the situation for me on Monday ship me out the proper one but I got that I got a, a couple little doodads I got a rear license plate mount on there with the light on it I got one for the front too don't know if that's what I'm gonna stick with or not but that's what I bought it just goes on there it was a whole ten dollars mounts to the inner valance there the holes are already there and everything else that's where they were supposed to be I think it kinda blocks the uh, the grill though I don't really care for that wish I didn't have to have a plate on the front to be honest with you but uh, I got a few other little doodads because the radio he told me comes with chrome knobs can't get the black knobs for it comes with the chrome knobs so I decided to get the chrome knobs for everything else. I bought a knob for my heater control. I got the cigarette lighter, which I needed anyways. So I just got them in chrome. Then I had to buy one for the uh, the wiper switch there. So we're going chrome. I got a radio coming Monday. Nothing fancy, just an AM, FM. I think Ron was the one that uh, pointed out to me that uh, Bill was selling them from the wrecking yard there. So I looked into it. Price was right. Uh, I've had good luck with Bill's stuff so far, so we're going to go with that. But that's what I'm doing. I got the uh, cables for those vent doohickeys, and this is the project today is i got to restore these vent doohickey things, because uh, there's not as much left of them as there was 50 years ago. But I ordered the new seals, you know, a whole $5 makes sense sort of sandwiches between the two two halves. The seal sandwiches, I guess I'm not showing that properly. The seal would go in there like that. And then the uh, the other half of the door goes on there like that. Which, you know, when you spin it, it helps the seal. Well, I've drilled out the pop rivets already. And now I've got to do something about the rust, so I've made this blank. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this just yet. But I will bring you along as I do it. 
I gotta repair this section at least because it's kind of the pivot. The vent sits in there like that and swivels on these pivots. And I gotta reinforce that. So I need to make up a patch just for this, just a small piece, but this is real thin. And I don't think it was ever thick to begin with. So I've got some metal that's pretty thin, but it's gotta be weldable anyways. So we're gonna try that, try fix one of those and install that with fancy new cables. And then driving around in this 90 degree weather won't be so such a chore. It still isn't bad though, I tell you. Driving around, open up that quarter window over there, and it just blasts the air in at you. And if it's not a super hot air, it mean it feels nice. But anyways, guys, uh, I will bring you back when I get a little bit further on the uh, vents, uh, if they go well. If not, you'll never see it. Anyways, see you later, guys. And so the saga continues. I think I've come up with a brilliant solution for my vent repair issue. Too late to turn back now. She was rotten pretty well on both sides. I had to cut a big chunk out of here. Instead of making a little patch for that, I had to repair the back half too. So what I did was there was a good section, there it is, of the back half. I zipped that off and basically Frankensteined it onto this half. Thickness is irrelevant because it's just a flap basically. Then I took the complete piece as a backer and I'm going to weld that, or not weld it, I'm going to rivet back together. I think a little bit of uh, creative grinding and some black paint and sticking it inside the cowl and putting a vent on top of it. I don't think anybody's going to see what I did. Yeah, uh, the, the only spot you will see is looking directly in there and that's the side that I'm going to keep original. And once I grind the welds down like anything else, who's going to be the wiser? Bit for somebody that maybe watches YouTube. All right. Let's see if we can get you a finished product next. Just to like a brand new. Something like that. It does one of these. Opens, closes. Let's the air in, shuts the air off. I like it. My Frankenstein bent. Don't know if the other side's gonna be quite as simple. That side there still had all its pins and I mean, I just had to, to do a little bit of uh, fabrication on the spring there. I had to put a spacer and a bolt or something. But uh, this side here does not have quite as much to work with. But uh, we'll see. So same theory behind it. I think I can just patch the uh, metal itself. We'll see. We'll get the wife's side done first, though. I'll uh, come back if we get any further. Well guys, we've got a good old case of putting the cart in front of the horse. I got her in there now. And oh, is that ever sweet. Not a problem whatsoever. But, my problem is, the cable basically attaches to, I hope I can do this for you cable would attach to the end of this little rod and go through this area here where it has to be clamped which is another story I didn't show and through this hole then it comes out this hole and runs over to the cable well that's simple enough except that the new cable came with uh, it was just straight didn't have that loopy loop on the end of it I put the loopy loop on the end there so that it would go over the uh, the rod, correct? As so, shoot, slip over the rod, pull it in and out. But the hole's not big enough for the loopy loop. So did GM bend the loop after it was through the wall? I don't think so. Uh, I think what I've done is I've made my loop a little bigger than the original loop. So I have to tighten her up and see if we can get it in there. But we're close. Close, close, close. All right, guys. Let's see where we go. 
modern technology. Who needs it? Well, I didn't let it win. I picked uh, one of the hottest days this month to do it. But, it's in there. Oh, sorry about the shaky cam. I just need to put that back on there. And everybody's happy. Yeehaw. Air conditioning. Not quite as nice as uh, old uh, Impala's there, two door, but uh, it'll do. A little bit helps. Yeah. The more you use it, the better it works. That new seal's a little stiff. I like it. Alright, guys. Whoa. Uh, there we are. That's about it for now. I hear suppers are calling me. I made a good day out of this project. Breaks and naps and all that wonderful stuff. Hold on. There we go. Anyways, uh, have yourselves a good weekend. I don't see myself uh, doing much more. Uh, might uh, throw on a couple clips here towards the end. That's about it. Have yourselves a good weekend. See ya. Now, the funny thing about this one is, I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera proper like or not, but this is a right hand clutch. I didn't notice any difference until I was putting, I dawned on me, I'm like, whoa, that hole's on the wrong side. So, that was a bit of a bonus I got with, uh, with the truck. Whether that flywheel matches mine or not, I didn't really look into it, but uh, spare flywheel. If you ever want to switch her to right hand drive. But uh, Scott, I don't know if that's the, the look of the fork you've got or not. It's just one I've got here. Uh, didn't work on my truck. But uh, it's straight. Mine's got like a curve to it. Look like the one you were uh, you had in your hand. But anybody looking for a right hand drive uh, bell housing, I got one. The, the detail, this was, I guess, uh, it's a reprint of the original assembly manual that they used in the factory. You know, if you're just curious as to how many shims go in because yours don't exist in your rod support, it's perfect for that. Now, the reason I'm doing this little clip was for stove bolt. Here's my uh, little uh, antique find. This is a maintenance manual. I got this at a, uh, I guess it's a consignment store. It's full of antiques and all kinds of other stuff. Now, uh, it was no dollar twenty-five like yours, buddy, but uh, I just couldn't pass it up. I know I paid way too much for something just to read, but uh, this is for all the heavy trucks, the uh, GMCs. So I don't know if it's uh, rarer than most or not, but uh, I paid for it as if it was the only one left in the country. But just like that one you've got, Scott, it's just a, it's an incredible detailed book. I believe yours was a motor book, which covered everything, but this is strictly GM. And it's, uh, it's got all the little details. Another, uh, just something to read. I think I've got this one pretty much memorized now. But, uh, there you go, guys. This, uh, On a breakdown of a 10 speed transmission. There you go. It's just these, these are all the, uh, I believe they'd be like the 5500 and up series trucks. It's interesting. It's nice, uh, nice reading. See ya.